All right, and we are live with Anand. Anand, nice to have you here today. Quite excited about our conversation. How are you? I'm fine. How are you, Sunny? I am. I'm well. I'm well. So maybe just to uh, to get things started, it should be, you know, where I like to start is is usually where I met, and and a lot of the conversations are like in 2011, you know, in this meetup or something. But with you and I, it's not that. It's actually much more recent. Um, I'm trying to think exactly how we connected the dots. It did it have something to do with, I guess, these these Bitcoin stories. Yeah, it did. It did. Um, in fact, we did uh, again. We made, we met at Bitcoin cyberspace. Honestly, most of the people I'm meeting these days are from the Bitcoin community, and uh, it's the Bitcoin cyberspace. And we meet a lot of friends there, and that's where I met you, like most of the other Bitcoiners. So uh, I was looking at something. Uh, which kind of brings out Bitcoin, uh, you know, Bitcoin and personal stories of Bitcoin. And uh, there was just a, you know, thought one, a shower thought once uh, on a Friday morning. So I looked at it and I was searching about it. And then I came across Bitcoin stories and I said, oh, you know what, someone is already doing it. And that's why and I looked at what you're doing. I liked it. I said, you know what, Sunny, you're doing a good job. I like what you're doing. These were some of the thoughts I even had. So I'm happy someone is picking up that that part of the Bitcoin, you know, Bitcoin yeah. landscape. Cool. Thanks. So well, I appreciate the compliment. And I guess whatever it is that's happening here, even though I'm a bit clueless about it, it, it seems like it's working because my, my goal was to meet people like you. <laughs> yes, absolutely, absolutely. I'm not going to lie. Uh, and what do, what do I mean by people like you? I mean, people that are like minded, that are building on Bitcoin. It doesn't matter what country or religion or race or whatever it's just it just matters that that you're that you see some future in bitcoin and you're building on it you're not just sitting and watching from the sidelines yeah. and and secondly when we talked whatever it was a couple weeks ago you also shared your project which we'll get into later on mm. um and kind of like the the idea behind it and also the application itself a bitcoin a, a Bitcoin wallet, a Bitcoin bank almost, uh, you know, so super fascinated, love the fact that it's open source, that it's like, you know, again, really wraps around the Bitcoin ethos and, and again, wanted to do this with you. So uh, with that said, why don't we start with, uh, I guess, before you got into Bitcoin, started your company, before all of this, where does your story begin? And as I was mentioning earlier, you know, I kind of see Bitcoin as a singularity, you know, kind of coming into Bitcoin, yeah. what was your lens and coming out of it? How did it kind of change the arc of your career? So my story is not very different from a lot of Bitcoiners, right? Uh, you, you know, you find out about Bitcoin once. You relate to something, you ignore it, then you you know look at it once again, and then suddenly things start clicking. So um, my background is um, I'm a computer engineer. That's what I did in my um, engineering. So I love computers um, and uh, you know how you can use that tech to improve people's life. So that was my main goal. But then I also did my uh, management degree from uh, Indian Institute of Management, Calcutta that gave me a good perspective of the overall, how the financial systems work, not just financial systems, how a company works, what's the, what are the economics behind things and you know general, general stuff that you learn in um, these places. So I, I would say my background was pretty, you know, pretty um, aligned with, uh, with, uh, with stuff you want, you have to have some clue on before you, you know, um, start understanding Bitcoin. I would say, though, that, you know, after getting into Bitcoin, I've learned much more about economics and management and computer science than I had done in the whole of my degree. But, uh, but it did give me a, a bit of a kickstart in terms of a uh, head start in terms of understanding Bitcoin. Anand, are you from Calcutta? Is that the region you're from or did you go no, to university no, I, there? I, I, did, I, I went for my IMS Calcutta there, but I'm not from Calcutta. Um, I'm more, um, I've been traveling around, but more from Maharashtra. In mm, no, I asked because my, my parents are from. Oh, Canada. is it? Okay. Yeah. yeah Sunny Ray. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and yeah. And growing up, uh, we used to visit, uh, Kolkata every, every year. <laughs> nice. <laughs> for, nice. For some time. Yeah. Yeah. So interesting. Okay. So then what happens, I guess, so computers, so that seems like, a 
an interesting place to get started. Uh, so fascination with computers. Yes, so India, right? So, so, then, so in India, people are, um, there are a lot of software engineers. It's one of the biggest industry, especially when you're educated and mm. you want to get into it. Um, so, you know, computers was always my passion, but I, because I wanted to open a company and understand other aspects of it, management uh, really helped. All that was fine. I was doing well. I was, um, uh, you know, I was settled in UK, London for uh, uh, since 2005. I went there, set up my business there, was working there, happy. Everything was going fine. And then um, I worked for a lot of banks. Um, that helped a little bit. I worked for a lot of uh, uh, massive IT <clears throat> projects. Uh, so that helped a little bit. But then I think sometime in 2015, I came across Bitcoin. Um, and completely the architect or the engineer in, in me said, yeah, Bitcoin is great, but you know, I need to start looking at blockchain, the technology. So I went down the blockchain rabbit hole first and then uh, came out the other end uh, realizing, you know what, a blockchain without its own native currency doesn't work. Because if you are, if someone is going to put in the money to incentivize the you know players, then actually the control is in their hand. It's not decentralized anymore. From there, I went into the crypto rabbit hole. I um, tried to do some crypto projects. Uh, that was probably 2016, and then I came off. But just to pause there, so I I love that because, so so block blockchain is the ultimate uh, Trojan horse. Yeah, that's <laughs> see, it, it depends on where you come from. So if you are a Wall Street guy, when I talk to some of my friends who are into investment banking and stuff, they start the, they start completely the other way. So they don't understand the blockchain speak. They don't understand the tech speak, mm. and that's perfectly fine. But as soon as you talk to them about new money and uh, it, it's an inflation hedge and that kind of language, then suddenly they're like, oh, okay, I know what you mean. So it really depends who you're talking to. And uh, you, if you change your context a little bit, their frame of reference is completely different. So if you adjust your frame of reference to there, suddenly it makes much more sense to them. So being a computer scientist, the first uh, engineer, the first thing that came to my mind was the tech. Let's go for the tech. And that, that is what the you know vibe was then. It was all about blockchain and DLT and stuff. So that and then crypto rabbit hole, uh, went into crypto, looked at a few uh, altcoins and stuff. Still did not invest much, uh, unfortunately or fortunately. Uh, but I was trying to you know work on this piece, trying to learn what it is all about. And then, then finally, uh, you know, um, I saw the light at the end of the tunnel. And uh, that's since then, probably since 2017, I've been focusing only on Bitcoin. So that's uh, that's how I ended up in the Bitcoin rabbit hole. It's so interesting. Yeah, Bitcoin is a bit uh, toxic, it seems, for a lot of people too, right? Like the blockchain seems more palatable. And uh, I, I remember, because I, again, I run Bitcoin, I mean, I've been running Bitcoin events since the beginning because I like connecting with people and all that. And at one point, I consciously decided to call it, I think, like the, the Canada Bitcoin blockchain event, just added the blockchain in there, even though it didn't seem natural. But, you know, just to get more eyes on on it, um, eventually we even called it Fintech Canada. Yeah. <laughs> just so to get so more there, there are levels of dilution. So you, you can go yeah, from yeah. Uh, Bitcoin to crypto. It's like a Venn diagram. Bitcoin, which is the heart <laughs> and the real value of everything. Then you, you want to dilute it to crypto. Then you would go for, you know, DLT and if you want to even go for the digital yeah. digital uh, tokens or something and then beyond that is just fintech everything is fintech right so yeah uh, yeah you, you I would say on... Bitcoin Bitcoin is at the heart like all roads lead exactly. to Bitcoin <laughs> absolutely <laughs> so whether people get so, into some shit coin or some blockchain you know fit, uh, bank application whatever it is eventually somehow some way they do hopefully or not hopefully but it, eventually they lead to uh, bitcoin so i kind of like that and uh, i don't know anyway so where, where what's next what happens in your so you're where at 2017 now yeah 2017 the the, the market is hot and uh, people are looking for for uh, consultants to help them out so um, i work with a few companies try to explain them what's li lightning was just picking up at that time so what's uh, what really is the tech behind it? How does it work? What is the economics behind it? Um, so I was consulting with a lot of companies. Um, I did get a lot of uh, uh, understanding and learning from the you know existing banking system as well. So I was able to connect those dots. Um, so that was a pretty good period because I did meet a lot of people, including some of your guests. Um, and 
uh, then um, I did try to open an exchange uh, in sometime late in 2017, but uh, I realized it's it's a bit too late. Um, and then uh, you know, looking at my past, and then few of few of uh, what do you say, um, people who think like me around me, um, we realized that our real strength is product development. It's not uh, financial infrastructure. We have been in product development. We understand product. We have done a lot of retail products. We understand the pulse of uh, retail user. Um, and Wallet was a space we think uh, we thought is uh, is somewhere we can add value. Wallet is something where which is the first touch point. It is the touch point to blockchain. You can't touch blockchain, right? Unless you you can run your own node. You can do mining, but for an end user, Wallet is the touch point. That is that is the blockchain for them. That is Bitcoin for them, right? So uh, we looked at the wallet space. Uh, we looked around in terms of what is there, what is not there. And uh, we pretty much unanimously came to the conclusion that this is where we want to, you know, this is where we want to play our part. Uh, we want to build a wallet. We want to build a wallet that is, uh, that is uh, very product centric. It's not tech centric. So what is the user getting out of it rather than what is the technology behind it? Um, uh, abstracting the technology away as much as possible, but at the same time, making sure that you use the best tech. Because if you really want to use the best tech, uh, if you really want to abstract tech away, it has to be good tech. If it is not good tech, then it's very difficult to abstract it away. So um, we did a lot of uh, a lot of POCs, a um, lot of feasibility studies on the technical engineering side, um, and a lot of uh, a few breakthroughs in terms of doing Xiaomi secret sharing on a mobile device in the way we wanted to, a lot of stuff that was not done. And uh, that gave us uh, the initial, uh, you know, encouragement to, to go and go on and build, uh, start building Hexa. So Hexa is the wallet uh, we have. It's a Bitcoin only open source, completely non-custodial, completely registration free. We don't need to do KYC. So you download and that's it, start using, right? Um, it's very powerful, uh, and uh, the company. So we, you know, we established a company. The name of the company is Bithive, and uh, yeah, that's where the journey, the building journey within Bitcoin started. Anand, I, 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 so um, curious. So, like, as you're thinking through, so I, I like that. So the instinct that obviously the wallet is a central piece of the ecosystem and to the user is obviously a, a like a, a brilliant insight. I don't think I lost you there for a second. You back? Yeah, yeah I'm here. Um, so I guess my, my question was, um, how, how does, how do you, uh, at this point in time, were you even thinking around monetization or how do you build a business around it? Because it seems like a lot of uh, Bitcoin wallets don't really have much of a business plan. You know, maybe it's advertising, maybe it's some subscription fee, or did you just think, no, let's just keep, you know, solving problems and, and that will present itself eventually. So what, what I did know from my product background is uh, there are a lot of products which eventually make money, right? So they do make money, uh, but they eventually make money. They don't make money right from the first, uh, the first step really is to make a good product and get users on board. The users need to like you. There are always opportunities. And finally, we think we have figured out um, how to monetize the wallet, but we'll come to that later. The most important part was to actually, actually build a product that people like, that we like. And then, then you know, there's a, there are always there are lots of lots of examples in uh, in in the app space where people build build first and monetize later. So that was our thinking when we started. Um, but eventually, when we got on with a lot of other people, uh, people tested out our wallet. We figured out uh, where we can actually monetize it. Okay, interesting. So I guess before we move into the kind of the bit hive story even more so and, and all that, is there anything else you wanted to share on like more of a personal note? I mean, I think in, in, earlier you were, you were saying how you had gone, was it in London or something? You were working with some companies or is that so where I, BitHive I, was started or what, what is the, where's the home of, of I guess? So BitHive is a London company. BitHive is a London company. I was in London till recently, so I'm a I'm I'm a British citizen. Lived there 
you know kids there everything my house is there um i have recently you know moved on, moved from london but uh, everything that i talked about till now everything happened in uh, the you know heart of uh, european financial sector <laughs> I see. And what does like your kind of the team or like the people behind this project look like? Like, how did you guys all connect and, and meet? So it was it was more of a, you know, one at a time thing. So like I'm speaking to you, I, I spoke to a lot of people, just generally chatting with people, what I'm passionate about, what, why I have left such a such a, you know, a well-paying job and what I'm trying to do now why i'm suddenly all uh, you know um, busy reading stuff and listening to stuff so when you talk to a lot of people some people get it some people get interested so that's how you know the 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 team um, the initial team was formed so we are for four of us four founders um three of them from london and uh, one is uh, from india so i met a couple of people in london we you know we our wavelengths matched and we thought okay this is exactly what we all want to do so people in my circle and people you you know would generally meet so that's how i met the first two founders um so three of us and then then one more founder who is who was my friend from my college years he he was like okay he called up one day he was talking okay what are you up to what's interesting and we start talking about bitcoin and then he gets interested and two weeks later he calls again with questions so finally you know uh, four of us uh, came together to start bithive okay interesting so then and so so bithive is a bitcoin wallet effectively right an open source non custodial bitcoin wallet where people can hold their own keys right yeah it's it's a hexa wallet is the name the wallet is hexa, hexa wallet, wallet. bithive is the mm. name of bithive is the name of the company got it so, got it exa wallet is yeah absolutely non custom and when we looked at the wallet space we studied the wallet space very well we looked at the wallet space it was very clear that people were thinking more of tech first there were very few wallets which could compete with a normal app out there that we are used to or with a you know coinbase uh, kind of a experience so that's where we thought you know what this is exactly where we can uh, we can play our part your goal was essentially to 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 fit that 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 um that market need if you will uh of a like a, a solid you know bitcoin wallet open source non custodial everything you'd want but at the level of like a coinbase user experience that was kind of the initial goal exactly exactly and and it is it is like uh, it is it is it is where the trajectory of the technology is um so at this point in time coinbase might be easier for some people uh, but if you really look at the new regulations coming in and the stuff that you have to do while even while you know uh, registering with coinbase is way more difficult than setting up hexa and starting you know using hexa so that is where i think uh, actually non custodial solutions might be uh, might have better experience than custodial solutions and that is what we are aiming for which is which is again quite a, quite a quite a unique take in this space um we definitely believe that we can actually provide a better non custodial experience than a custodial one because of because it is your money you are managing it if we provide you a way to manage it better then you do not have the overhead of all the regulations that you will have to undergo while going through kyc and other stuff with okay. so what's next so, anant how do you want to how do you want to do this in terms of maybe is there anything else you wanted to share on the wall there do you want to maybe do a screen share and take us through kind of the experience or ah uh, yeah i won't mind you um, if 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 you um, let me share i'll share the wallet that i have on me and uh, you will see what i mean if you need a bitcoin address to send some bitcoin to i can give you one no, i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> okay here we go hexa so nice. just so hexa uh, starts off very clean interface um, you would uh, you would understand that the kind of design it has the modern design as soon as you see it if um, what we have also done is uh, put in educational content wherever we could so while the screen is loading there are a few seconds why don't we teach the user about one small thing every time so you saw when it was logging in 
and um, you, did you see that sats message yeah i saw it yeah so you just you know you learn something on the way when you log in it's pretty simple you have different accounts uh, like you would expect in your banking uh, app you have a you have a checking account you have a savings account you even have a test account right which is uh, which we give with uh, test sats uh, pre filled in so as soon as you download you have 10000 sats and you can just play around with it and these are test sats so they work exactly like bitcoin but on the test test um, you know test chain um again if you want to learn more about what is a test account how does bitcoin work you know there is a lot of information in here to just ramp up yourself so test account is where the user will probably land up first and just you know use it even if they delete it it doesn't matter if you look at checking account checking account is nothing but a single sig account so you just log into checking account and you just send it to someone you don't have to uh, it's it's for for your coffee essentially that's that's a typical single sig account this there are very few other accounts or other wallets which have a support for both a single sig checking account and a multi sig saving account so the savings account is actually multi sig it's a two of three multi sig and uh, um, uh, you need a two factor authentication to spend from this so what we what typically people will do is keep their uh, you know pocket change in the checking account and you know all the other stuff in the savings account um that's the account structure you can add more accounts and uh, you know they just keep appearing one after the other um uh, it it gives you a very much feel of of uh, how would you, how you would want to manage your money slightly differently in different buckets right uh, very much similar to your you know the banking app you might use or generally it's a human intention human need to manage money differently right um it's sorry that the is, checking account is that what lightning enabled or just like a normal bitcoin transaction or how does that work so checking account right now is a normal bitcoin account but uh, it will have lightning built in so this, this would be this is the first wallet which will have a lightning and a multi sig wallet in the same you know account in the cool. same wallet and that's the need right you want Very to nice. you want Love to it. you want Love to spend it. easily you just you are not looking for a lightning tech wallet what you want is i want to be able mm. to spend immediately with low fee so that's your checking account you want to have security that's your savings account you want more security add a vault account right so that's that's uh, that's the fundamental if you look at the whole app you will never you will not really see too much of bitcoin language in it um the so this is the basic structure but if you look at the you know the most important part of how you back up a uh, non custodial wallet this is where people actually get married and you know run away from custodial wallet when you ask them to write down 24 words so that's the first thing we wanted to solve and this is how we solve it is basically having your um, seeds um, you know shamil you basically keep recovery keys with uh, five in in five different places so you can have a recovery key as um, you know as a uh, pdf somewhere on your somewhere on your uh, you know drive or somewhere on your email that you have um, so you can keep it there at the same time you can keep some of you know one with your friend one with your family member so you can you have five recovery keys now though you can give recovery keys to others they can't really steal fund using the recovery keys they can just help you recover your wallet when it's lost it's it's pretty amazing um Hey Anna, Anna, just just to be a little bit uh, of a devil's advocate, how 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 is this easier than me writing down twenty four letter uh, words? See what happens is twenty. Like I mean, I'd have to coordinate with all these people and save stuff on my computer and go to all these places. No, isn't that more or is it is it less? Is it? it it's actually um, it's not about just the ease. What what when in our uh, when we were talking to people, the most important thing that came out is when we tell people that this is your backup, and if you lose this, it's the problem. That's when they get scared. so what this does is uh, one you don't have so there's no single point of failure that's the most important thing to understand there is no single point of failure you scan qr code and boom that's it you have stored one of the recovery keys so uh, within a few clicks you store five recovery keys in five different places and that's it you forget about it uh, you don't even have to check it whether they are alive where where they are active or not active it this tells you auto- automatically so what that does is you basically imagine five qr codes uh, kept in five different places and if you lose one of them it doesn't matter 
you just need three of them to get back. So that is the key uh, benefit. So the resiliency is in that even you use any of these three keys, you get your uh, get your wallet back. So mathematically, it's much more resilient than writing down one twenty four seed word, um, one one paper with twenty four seed words, and then trying to keep it in a vault or something. So that's uh, that's basically the backup mechanism uh, which we wanted to really crack. <laughs> I don't, have you seen stuff like uh, Unchained Capital, Casa, for example, those experiences? So like, and if so, how are you, how is it different here? Yeah, absolutely. Um, amazing question. So we have looked at Casa, we've looked at Unchained Capital, great work they're doing. Uh, the way, Where we differ is uh, um, 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 uh, just a multi-sig solution like Casa or Unchained. What that, what, where, what that, what that will do is, Give you the same security that you have uh, with uh, with the recovery option here, but at the transaction level, it is not very convenient. So it's very good for your cold storage. You know, you store the ten bitcoins you have over there. That's great for great for cold storage. But when you want to, let's say you want to use it just for sending um, hundred dollars to someone, or maybe a million sats to someone, you actually will have to go and get three keys signed from three different geographical locations, right? Here, you don't have to do that. Uh, transactionally, if you want to save some money in one account, in the checking account, you can just you know send it uh, just using a mobile phone. So what this uh, gives you is two different layers. One is the recovery layer, which is completely different and you can have max security there. On top of that, accounts are built. So our accounts can have different uh, transactional security of their own. So what uh, we, we are approaching it, and I think it's quite uh, uh, quite important, is the transactional security versus the security of your backup. And you, there are different requirements. There are different trade-offs. Recovery you would use once in a few years. So it's very important that the recovery is much more resilient so that you don't lose it while your wallet is pretty much with you. If you lose it, you will know the next second. So uh, we did a white paper on this and uh, we presented it at DEF CON. Um, DEF CON is the biggest uh, hacker conference uh, in the world. Um, so we did not start with Bitcoin. We started with security essentially and cryptography. Um, we got rave reviews there. We got a lot of, uh, um, lot of support from there in terms of the security aspects of uh, how, how we are trying to use it. And that is where we, you know, we were pretty confident that this, this makes sense. And after that, it was more about making it user friendly. How does it look easy, and stuff like that. So there are uh, benefits uh, that a retail user would drive um, that um, you know that won't be available in a pure multi-sig solution. And is this is available now, or do people have to wait or something? Like, is it? Is yeah, it's it available. It's, it's, it's live. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People can download it. As of when? Uh, they. Uh, so like three months back, so, live three months ago. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's not. Okay. Not, so we, we are still in we are still in beta. So it's not like uh, um, so you can download it. There are hundreds of people using it already. They love it. They've kept their money in it. But we still want to call it beta for now, till we you know figure out and you know iron out all the all the creases. Uh, probably then we'll be out of beta. Cool. Okay. What else you got? I mean, I, I'm I'm. Uh... Taken aback. This is really cool. Really, really. This, cool. this is what like most of the people we have met. They, you know, uh, it's a quite a um, uh, how do you, ambitious wallet. We are trying to do a, a, a you know something which is not necessarily out there. It's not a given, um, but we have been at it for almost two years, one and a, one to two years, right? So um, we are pretty confident, and we have done a lot of work behind it. Um, so yeah, we uh, so one of so we have looked at the backup player. Can you still see the screen? No. Okay. So there's one more thing I think, and that would pretty much explain uh, where we are going with this. Um, so there's this backup player which we have talked about. Then on top of the backup player, there's multiple accounts, and you can easily manage it like a bank account. But on top of that, there's this friends and family layer. So what friends and family layer is is essentially you can add any contact on your list and uh, you can just send them bitcoins so you don't really need to um, really need to ask for an address so if i want to send you know some sats to a friend of mine i just go to send 
I would select that person and then just send them sats. That's it. So I'm going to send him one 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 dollar. That should be enough. By the way, I I don't have to just do that. This is again something which no other wallet has. I can add recipients from within the wallet. So I can add multiple recipients from within the wallet, and I can batch the whole transaction. So the whole transaction will have a single fee. There's no other wallet which does that in wallet. Exchanges do that and stuff, but not within the wallet. And while I am at it, I'm going to just uh, probably send funds to even my um, savings account because you know why not use it to uh, in the same transaction. I batch the whole transaction. Magic happens behind the scene. It tells me what the right fee is, uh, which is again you can see the fees in USD. Um, not not necessarily in Sats, and um, I confirm and send. I'm, I've just sent three transactions in one go in a few clicks with a very low fee, um, and that's it. It's gone. So that's the that's the social layer where uh, you don't really need to ask for Bitcoin addresses. Um, once you add a contact, you can just you know coordinate with them. So that's the friends and family part of Hexa. And once again, you do uh, the user controls all their keys, even on the lightning or sorry, on the checking account, <clears throat> as you said, right? Yes, yes, it's completely non-custodial. We are not interested in holding the keys because you know that makes us uh, makes us uh, 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 makes us uh, we will have to be much more regulated and stuff. We want to be a software provider, product provider. User have a lot of um, responsibility on their. Hands, but we do give them the tools to manage that more efficiently. It's completely non-custodial. And one of the few comments we have got is, oh, this must be a custodial wallet, right? So actually it matches the experience of a custodial uh, service. Cool, cool. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm very intrigued and impressed. So that's good, Anand. Anything this, this, else you wanna share on the demo or should we? No, I think that gives you, uh, there's a lot coming coming on in terms of a lot more accounts. We are integrating mm -hmm. with a lot a lot of services, for example, Swan. Uh, we, are, we have integrated with Fast Bitcoins in UK. So it basically gives you a gateway into all things Bitcoin. That's the idea. Um, so you, you would be able to add probably a vault account just by clicking on add. You can right now create a donation account here. So when you create a donation account, you just get a donation web page. You can give the donation web page to anyone. So for example, if I'm creating a donation called Save Trees, right? Organized by, let me put your name there. Donate, sets and And the best part of it is completely non-custodial. People don't believe it. So this is it, right? Um, I provided the details. If I want, I can make it, uh, you know, two-factor which makes it multi-sig account. And uh, I can just say, you know what? Give me a donation account. Now what I get is what uh, you would have to do a lot to get with. Uh, it gives you a donation web page, right? Um, if you look at the donation web page, I'm just gonna copy that. Um, and let's say put in my Safari. And it gives me a donation web page. That's it. I can send this link to anyone. I can send this, put this link on my Twitter profile, and start connecting, you know, donations here. Um, and I'll get that money directly into my wallet over here in this account called the donation account. And this web page that you see changes the, you know, changes the address, uh, changes the address every ten minutes. Go for it. All right. Okay, we're back here. Okay, so very interesting. Uh, yeah, I'm like I'm super fascinated. I'm I'm kind of surprised I didn't hear about you guys. But I, I guess if you've only been around for three months, then that's probably uh, that probably explains it. But yeah, this is exactly the type of stuff that I hope more people are building out there because, uh, yeah, this is wonderful, wonderful, great job, Anand, to you and your team. Yeah, it's 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 mostly the team, but I'll I'll take the credit for now. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you will. No, I'm kidding. Okay, so wait, should we should we should we should we stop this then? Should we stop the the screen share? Okay, so yeah. cool. So what's sure. uh, 
so I guess what's the story behind now this like or what's what's next in terms of uh, you know are you guys looking to just get more beta users and get more feedback and and off of that and then you said you've also started to maybe think a little bit about how you guys are going to make money as well so what does that look like is that uh, is that kind of what you're alluding to with Swan and, and partnerships like that yeah so uh, what this wallet really gives you is a platform. Um, platform to add as many as accounts as you want, uh, which essentially is a different X pub every time, which means that uh, you you do not really mix the funds. So it's quite a privacy focused wallet. It's not like privacy first, um, but it's still privacy focused wallet. You don't uh, unintentionally mix your funds and uh, lose your privacy. So we have taken that um, you know those aspects into consideration. What adding multiple account gives you is you can actually add multiple uh, each one account with each partner so you can have a swan account in here you can have a whirlpool account in here where you you probably do coin join if you want to you can have a vault in here uh, provided by one of the collaborative custody providers so this is essentially a gateway a non custodial gateway right where people can uh, people can put in their services we integrate with them and the user gets uh, what they want to use so it, it, it can be as simple as you come in, you use this is the you know, three accounts that we provide and live with it, that's good enough. But if you want to extend uh, your Bitcoin use, you can do that as well. Cool. So that is where, when we integrate with partners, that's where uh, you know the money starts flowing as in uh, the actual buy and sell happens. And that is where you know we make uh, a small part of it. That's one 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 way to make uh, one one of the business models. Yeah, so I, I don't know if you there know. There are two, but, but this is one of them. But at at, at Unocoin, we partnered with Blockchain.com many years ago, like I don't know, four years ago or something. And, right. And okay. We did an integration <clears throat> where people could just stay within Blockchain.com itself and hold their keys and everything, but essentially, you know, provide us all the information that we need to, to execute, um, you know, a buy or sell or whatever it is. And so, so there might be an opportunity there as well. I'd love to, you know, again, we're, we're, we're like, as a company, as an exchange, we're not really looking to hold people's keys either or their Bitcoin. Oh, awesome. uh, we want to facilitate the exchange. That's kind of where we shine. And so, yeah, so maybe there's, maybe there might be an opportunity there. Absolutely. See, the only criteria we have with uh, integration is that you should let uh, what we call it uh, bring your own wallet. So if you if you let people bring their own wallet, then that's essentially what we want, right? Mm. Um, yeah, uh, that's that's really it. Then what what happens is obviously on ramps are custodial and they have regulations. We completely understand that. But once the user have their sats, they need to be able to control it. And if you can, you know, put it directly into their wallet address, that's it. That's mm -hmm. all is needed. So cool. And then, so that that's really interesting. Um, I guess. I guess if that's is there anything else you wanted to share in terms of uh, yeah, the that's product? that's actually yeah, that's actually one of the ways. Uh, it's not just buy and sell. Buy and sell is a you know big piece mm -hmm. of what's what happens today. But the way we see the Bitcoin, um, uh, or if, if this was a non-custodial bank, uh, you don't just buy and sell Bitcoin. You, you do a lot more with it. For example, you might want to lend, lend Bitcoins. You might want to borrow against it. You might want to use um, uh, some assets built on top of Bitcoin, like, you know, I don't know, Liquid, RGB. There's a lot of tech happening and we are keeping a tab of those things. So a use case could be you could have an Apple shares account. So you actually can invest, uh, um, you can take 0.1 of your Bitcoin and buy Apple stocks from an account, which, uh, which is built on top of Lightning with RGB. And uh, it's like essentially an Apple share token. You could lend and borrow against your Bitcoin like I, like I spoke about. You can actually um, use um, a custod you know, collaborative custodial service like... Uh, like Casa or Unchained, if you are an enterprise and you don't want to hold all your keys, you want someone else to have a part of it so that they can help you when you lose your keys, then then that that is another integration. So partnership is not just related to buy and sell, but there are a lot of other partners in the, that are that are developing in the Bitcoin space, which we want to integrate with. So it's, it's a holistic solution. Can you also, like if you have a 
public address of uh, of a key that you hold elsewhere? Can you track it here as well, or, or is it only the ones you can control? Yeah. No, no. If you um, so another another account that we'll have, we have literally a backlog of twenty types of accounts user That's can nice. have. But one of the <laughs> one, of, one of the very simple simple things is import import a wallet as an account. So you go for add an account, and then an option comes up import wallet. Now importing a wallet is just two types. Either you import a wallet completely, which is basically putting in the seed and bringing the essentially the whole wallet in here. For example, if you have blockchain.com wallet and you have the seed, if you put the seed in, then actually um, the whole amount appears there and you can use it like it's the blockchain wallet. So you will see a blockchain account, blockchain.com account, and it's it's everything. When you when you go for view, um, view only, view or only or, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 view only, then it, it tells you, okay, just give me the expert. You give it the expert and that's it. And a lot of hardware wallets support it. So if you have money in your ledger, treasure, whatever, uh, you scan a QR code and this becomes a view only wallet uh, with, with a separate account. So you would have a treasure view only, you have a ledger view only, you have a Swan account, uh, you have a checking account, you have a savings account, you have, a, you know, you can really build up your portfolio. How big is your engineering team? I mean, is it just, is it, like you and a couple guys or i mean how i mean it uh, seems really, like that's uh, how it started that's how it started but now we are probably um including you know ux guys and contractors uh, we are 12 of us and have you guys um so given that you you're still looking for like the the kind of the business model around how to generate revenue have you guys fun uh, looking at fundraising or have you guys already fund fundraised or are you kind of bootstrapping it or how are you guys getting it off the ground so we did we did initially bootstrap uh, four of us came together put in a bunch of money we started off so we initially bootstrapped the initial prototype and um, the alpha went out with the bootstrap we were not sure, right? Like you really don't know when you're trying something new, how would the market take it? Have we completely missed a point over there? Is there a market fit for that? But that went well. So we got some initial pre-seed angel investment um, and uh, that is where we are. And we finally shipped out the beta. Uh, so that is where we are. Uh, we are we are going for a next round pretty soon. Um, that would be a pre-seed round. But um, but yeah, we bootstrapped. We got initial a little bit of initial funding, and we'll 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 we are looking for more. Very interesting. Cool. So, do you want to switch gears a little bit in terms of maybe some of the other or my my last questions here, or do you want to finish up anything on on? I mean, it seems like you guys are doing a lot, and all of it seems really like intellectually honest it seems like it's on the right path at least at least from my perspective you know you hear about a lot of ugh, some like very scammy projects in this space so it's always nice to and refreshing to, to it, yeah to come across some projects yeah. that are you know <laughs> that are it's doing hard. like real work the, the, problem, <laughs> the problem problem it's it's hard it's really hard the engineering uh but but i think we have got some good guys uh we've got some good advisors on board now including matt Ardell and uh uh, um, Corey Kipston from Swan. Um, so, um, and Oleg and a few guys, we have a very good bunch of engineers we found in India. That's another story why I moved to India um, after being in UK for 15 years and I had no plans to move. Right? Why was um, that? that uh, so, the, yeah, so when, when we started looking for people, uh, we actually found, found some really good people in India because software engineers are a bunch here and there were actually people and there are no uh, Bitcoin focused technology companies. There are exchanges, but when there's no block stream there, there's no chain code there, there's no, um, uh, you know, technically, so pe there were people who wanted to do technical stuff, but there was no avenue. So we did get a bunch of people and they were like, you know what, we want to work, you, what you're trying to do is amazing and stuff. So I said, you know what, let me move to India for a while. That uh, also helps my personal cash flow because you know uh, when you are building something, you you really don't want to spend. Uh, so you want to buy, bring down your burn rate um, because you wouldn't be making money initially. Uh, in fact, you would be spending. So India made sense. So that's why uh, two years back we moved to India just to give it a try. Um, so far, it's going well, and uh, we are finding the right people. It's not that we don't have people outside. We did we did get a couple of good guys in US, uh, um, a couple of guys in UK as well. 
but when we started in most of our engineering team is in india that's 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 interesting yeah no i agree with you i think it is really difficult to find uh you know good bitcoin engineers in india um there doesn't seem to be too many of them so it seems like uh, you, you got lucky and, and it, I'm sure it's half luck and half probably having to train them and teach them as well, right? About some of this stuff. Very interesting, Anand. Um, hey, Anand, so what, what else in terms of, I guess, um, do, you wanna, do you wanna maybe share, uh, you know, it's like Peter Thiel's famous question, which is um, something that you believe to be true that most others in Bitcoin maybe would disagree with you on? Um, I think I mentioned that uh, by chance is that I do believe that uh, non-custodial experience uh, can be and will be maybe in a couple of years will be much better than a custodial experience. So most of the people, you know, go with this given trade off that, okay, it's custodial and convenience versus non-custodial and more privacy or more security. What we are actually saying is that actually your non-custodial experience can be like like WhatsApp or any app that you use, and it can be much, much smoother than you know using a passport, scanning a passport, dancing with your driving license in front of the camera, and so on. So that's uh, that's and that's that's a take that I haven't heard too too many times um, in the Bitcoin space. So that's uh, that's what mm -hmm. I'll go with. Cool. And then what about outside of the Bitcoin space? Any anything on that front? Uh. So the last few years we have been, you know, I've been just uh, too much into Bitcoin space. So outside the Bitcoin space, right? So, so yeah, one thing I've realized while being in the Bitcoin space is that uh, this is this is probably going to go not go well. But uh, what I've probably realized is that um, books are um, over overvalued, right? So the amount of stuff I, I have learned. So we always, you know, um, look at books as the source of learning, but uh, the amount of stuff I've learned outside of books, you know, with uh, podcasts and with, uh, you know, articles and with Twitter and stuff is way more and way more concentrated and uh, much more uh, engaging than what you would get in the books. So, and books are like uh, from the last year, right? They do, do take time to build. Books are great. I'm not saying books are not great, but but my controversial take would be that books are overvalued. Well, that's a good one. I like that. Um, uh, over, overrated, rather. Interesting. Interesting. I like that one. That's good. As I stare at my my bookshelf over there in the corner. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, so, so don't get me wrong. So don't get me wrong. Books are great. Books are great. But see books were the only medium which uh, so, so printing was the only medium which was really available for spreading knowledge and it was for so long that we started uh, started almost worshiping book and you know in india especially right they, they literally worship books which is great so books are books were <laughs> the source and they did change the society for a long time but you know what now there are many more mediums. Book is a single dimensional medium, right? You read it, you absorb it, great. But you can have a multi-dimensional environment where you're looking at things, where you're listening to things, you're actually experiencing it. Maybe you're interacting with people. The amount of learning you can get with that medium is way more than you know reading a book. For example, I talk to people about people getting new into Bitcoin and I tell them about the, you know, uh, the segment war, the civil war in Bitcoin. No matter how much I send them articles and I, you know, tell them to read a book and, you know, uh, no matter what I tell them, they will never really understand how it actually went down and what people were thinking, what they were, you know, putting it out on the media. So this interactive experience is a way of learning, which is, which was not there and we relied on books, but it is there now. You can actually really interact in real time with a lot of people. And that is much more, um, you know, much more fruitful and productive than books. Yeah, I know. Before uh, I took this leap to, to commit myself to whatever I'm doing, I don't even know what it's called, this Bitcoin stories thing. Uh, I was kind of on the fence and I was thinking, I was asking a friend of mine uh, who's like a bit of a YouTube expert, I guess you could say. He's never on like in front of the camera. He's like the guy kind of behind the camera. And he was saying, 
he said to me, uh, like, I was like, you know, it's TikTok. Like, well, where is, you know, where does people, where do people want to like focus their time? And he's like, just imagine your knowledge base today and minus YouTube. <laughs> just, just, just take YouTube out of the, your, your Absolutely. knowledge base. Where would you be? And I just thought, oh my Lord, like, like YouTube is not just some little side toy. It is like, <gasps> It is, it is Absolutely. so essential, right? I mean, I mean, we learn everything off of it. Even, even nowadays, nowadays, I find myself when I do buy a book, after the first few pages, I'll just go in and look up the Google <laughs> talk or whatever it is by the author and just watch that first because <laughs> it's just easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so books are books. Books give you that feel. And I sometimes do read books. There's nothing wrong with books, but uh, they are slightly overrated and there are other mediums which are better. I like, that. I like that. Hey, you said you're a computer engineer. So I'm excited about your thoughts on uh, general AI. Any thoughts on, on this like um, concept of general AI that a lot of people like Elon Musk and Zuckerberg, yeah. people are talking, you know, Bill Gates, they're talking about yeah, it. Yeah. Do you think, do you think that's overrated too? Or, or do you think uh, there's something I'm there? A bit skept- I'm a bit skeptical. So AI absolutely makes a lot of sense. You know, you, improve the intelligence of the tools you have and stuff like that. AI is fine, but when it comes to general AI, I am skeptical, not, not because it's wrong or something. Inherently, I'm not sure you can, you can train machines to cross learn. I think that is where, um, so they can learn a lot in one field and you can make them learn a lot in a lot of fields. But how do you use this experience across each other? For example, if you, if you let's say you play, um, you play tennis and someone tells you, you know what, don't play tennis, take this table tennis bat and try to play. You know how a ball moves. You don't have to be taught to specifically learn table tennis, right? You can imply stuff from outside the context and uh, try to relate it to what you're doing then and there. So machine learning, when they learn so many data points, that is in a specific context. So that is my skepticism around general AI. Uh, I haven't seen, maybe I'm wrong, and this new thing that has come up, what's it called? Uh, Open AI? Open AI. GPT-3? And this, yeah, 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 I haven't seen that in detail, but I still think that it's about learning a lot in one field uh, and you cannot reuse that knowledge in another field. So that's what we can do as humans. That's that's where I draw the line. I haven't seen that yet. I will believe it when I see it. But that's my skepticism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take a look at it. It's pretty pretty fascinating. I mean, there are guys that are, or people that are designing, uh, like I don't know what do you want to call them platforms where you just like talk right. and like in natural language and it programs for you whatever you're looking to program and, and it's like they've got you know youtube videos of it um the one that blew me away i probably mentioned this way too much but there's like a bitcoiner like an og guy i think his name is marzon or something he uh he had a blog post that i was reading the other day where they were pretty much he was talking about how he took gpt3 started generating you know uh quotes would put it on bitcoin talk right. the yeah, famous yeah. Oh, forum yeah, I've, I've heard this one yeah. and <laughs> have you read this mm-hmm. yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah and then amazing. in the end he's just like in the end it's like the whole experiment and the blog itself is written by gpt3 and you're like and the guy's like i haven't even been on bitcoin <laughs> talk for like six years like it just figured this all out yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. So I, I agree with you. Um, so, but even if you step back and just look at like narrow bands of AI, they do potentially pose a threat to like job loss. No, I mean, I, I mean, I feel like a lot, I'd even talking about it, but like, like, isn't it foreseeable though, that, 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 that this technology, even minus let's say general AI, mm-hmm. um, that the fact that every car is going to drive itself in the next few years, the fact that, you know, there's a lot of like specialized things that, are going to be automated out of existence. And is our solution, well, just learn how to program? Well, I just told you, even you can now programs can be, programmers can maybe even be replaced to some extent, right? So so what what are we gonna tell people? Yeah, Yeah, I think that's a very, very interesting and sensitive topic. I, for one, believe that it 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 is going to be an issue. It is going to be a problem. And the reason I think it's a problem is because it's a, it's essentially a centralizing force. Uh, 
you know having ai and the kind of ai that uh, you know a google data center can afford it's not possible for someone else to afford so it will give them give big companies uh, a symmetric advantage over everyone else and you know in a dystopian future they would pretty much control everything and they would say you know what we make so much money anyway and we want to keep you happy so we'll just let you have universal basic income so we'll just keep you on uh, you know on a little bit of money and we'll have all the power because they are the only ones who can do ai others can't so they can you know have robots working in factories and doing everything like uh, you know um, like uh, one of those sci-fi movies and everyone else can just you know sit at home and get uh, basic income paid while these guys um, the the all the power can be centralized around them and that actually is uh, what bitcoin might fix a little bit <laughs> okay i was hoping you would go there i was going to ask you as a follow up so do you think there's a there's a potential there for bitcoin to act cuz I, i i actually think about that a lot is oh, can okay. bitcoin protect us against this this dystopian future can you know can it be that we not only take money back but eventually we take data back and you know you're even seeing with twitter I had a I had a mess happen. I don't even know if I want to say this, but I was changing the date on our Unocoin Twitter handle to the birth date of the company. Right. So I was just going to change the date. As soon as I did that, they thought I was underage and oh, locked yeah. me out of our Unocoin account. And luckily <laughs> I met Jack Dorsey, so I I I I I like not only, you know, filled out their forms, I I emailed Jack And then I uh I see on his uh, I go on YouTube and I see he's on live, you know, TV reporting to all the or like answering to all the regulators and politicians because of all the stuff that's happening in the United States. Right. So I thought to myself like how am I going to even get this fixed? I'm like why isn't Twitter decentralized? Like I why am I even having to go through people? Like uh have you thought about like I don't know, like do you think Bitcoin can eventually impact a lot of these spaces? so there there are so many layers to this probably we can uh, you know but but uh, the short answer is yes uh, the first thing if we do have a bitcoinized world um, even if it's not hyper bitcoinized what it does is it's let's let's leave well on let's talk about the money first right bitcoin only solves the money problem now what will happen there is if eventually people will have uh the real power so let's say some google wants to or some some centralized company wants to build up this ai capability right or a new company comes up which wants to do that actually they would have to source the capital from a lot of people right they cannot just borrow money at a very cheap rate from banks and just build up this big ai center right they will have to source and involve a lot more people and a lot more you know people who have this the sources like because it's it now the the money is in hands of a lot of people and they can't just uh, turn on a faucet with a with a bank take a lot of loan and build it so when a lot of people are involved uh, they would want to have a say or some kind of a control in that ai system so at least even if ai is powerful and it is only serving its masters it will serve lot many more masters and probably if it is really a good distribution in you know probably 50 years time uh, and bitcoin does lead to a good distribution of money it, it starts with a very skewed gini coefficient but because there is no central source and there is no kentolian effect um, it will eventually get to a much more um you know um, better spread of uh, money if you will so what that means is a lot more people who they would have to involve to even start the ai piece and that is where i think it will help as the first step and once people are used to managing their own wallet and have the responsibility of the wallet there is no reason why they can't have a key in their wallet which can pretty much uh, you know um have the control over the robot working for them so um the cryptographically they can control information which means that might uh, that might mean that you know um, some parts of ai can't impact them or they have control over uh, some of the ai productivity and maybe if the cars are driving around themselves if they are the one who hold the keys and it is bought with uh, with their one bitcoin 
then probably they are the only ones who can drive it or they control it or they get paid because of it so distribution of power and money is power right now distribution is of power is what uh, bitcoin will hopefully let this you know is the is the direction of travel uh, if bitcoin bitcoin happens and that is where i think it will be of at least two, of one force uh, opposing the centralization force that ai brings in and then you in know you also sense. i know we're coming to the end of this by the way this this conversation just keeps getting more and more interesting so we, if you're if you're down i'm down to do like a follow up whenever you're free again um but i was going to say you brought up this concept of ubi as well right and so um i agree with you i think that government led ubi can be disastrous and can lead to a very dystopian future um uh, but but do you think for number one question is is do you think there's a need for it especially having seen places like india and the level of poverty that exists but number two question is is do you think once again bitcoin and a privately kind of like a you know from the people if you will like not from any company is there a way to maybe uh do ubi in an open source way where the profits of automation and robotics to some extent are fed back to to people because i do worry sometimes about like you know if like like you said if you have four companies and three governments or two governments that like have all of the data um then that could be kind of scary but i don't know have you thought about that I, i don't know how work out but um, i think proof of work is uh, is essentially that's what people in countries like india do they they work a lot right they work for for their money so if that can that that actual proof of work can be somehow connected to mining bitcoins then actually that is going to help the distribution much more you know much fairer distribution um so it is going to be very difficult because you need uh, you know miners and stuff like that but conceptually just you know abstract everything how how we uh, abstract everything we know about bitcoin away um somehow if we could connect the the effort or the time people spend time is essentially the only other scarce thing we have right other than bitcoin right and essentially what you get by uh, with your wealth is your time right time is money money is time people print a lot of money people who print a lot of money you know, there's nothing but slave money because they print time out of nowhere from us and they enslave people because of that so this is i'm i'm taking lead from uh, one of the talks in bit bit block boom but essentially time is what they give so if somehow their time and their effort can be associated with uh, with their wallet and um, um, and that can mine while they're working probably we have a way to connect these people i am actually quite um, so with this price rise and all it's great but i don't know how it will play out in the sense if price is high how will you get even a good initial distribution so initial distribution is going to be bad but if the price is high even after that how can people who cannot afford even like you know um, 100 rupees or 100 dollars how would they afford even to buy a few sats and therefore the you know again bitcoins would be probably concentrated at least initially so we would have a period of transition where it's just a transfer of wealth from the one person now to a new one person later right to a new one person later but then after that we need to figure out a way maybe you know um, uh, some austrian or some libertarian has an answer to that i don't but yeah that's that's uh, one thing i do think about a lot as well you ever hear about the pineapple fund yes so this is this is this anonymous fund yeah is yeah yeah one? yeah connie from bitgive right. shared the story in a couple episodes ago but essentially where pineapple right. where some random person or group of people decided to give away 55 million dollars worth of bitcoin anonymously and oh, um and so so hopefully this new 1% will be more like you know put the pineapple fund <laughs> ah we hope so we yeah hope so. yeah yeah but you can't rely on charity um so it is mm. it is something we'll have to figure out uh, libertarians believe that uh, there is a way to achieve that or anarchists also believe that i'm not sure but um this is definitely better than what so for not definitely gini coefficient is just going higher and higher 
um bitcoin will definitely be better how much better we make it that really depends on bitcoiners i've never heard of that by the way the genic coefficient what is it so genic coefficient is the difference between the rich and the poor hmm. so for example genic coefficient of india is very high um as genic coefficient of russia is very high uh probably genic coefficient of a scandinavian country might be very low uh so that's that's basically the difference between the rich and the poor hmm very interesting okay so uh any questions that you wish i'd asked that maybe i didn't ah <laughs> uh, no i i i can't think of any at the top no, of my head no we covered quite a bit of ground <laughs> we did we did and we we always have scope for another one yeah definitely I, my first one's my my first one's a bit prescriptive because i like to get the story out and really cover kind of that but you know we can go wherever i i feel like we can definitely talk about a lot of things so but anand uh, this has been oh my god oh it's all it's been 90 minutes so it's been amazing thank yeah. you very very much um where do people you know if they want to download the app if they want to learn about you where, where do people go is bitcoinstories.org is that a thing yet or not really <laughs> someday <laughs> i i have that i have that domain <laughs> but nice. someday someday uh, done we will figure something out together yeah, um, yeah. so my, my twitter handle is anant underscore tap and that's uh, that's where you can get in touch with me my dms are open and the wallet more importantly is hexa wallet so that is h e x a um wallet and um, you can either find us on um, uh, you know twitter or our website hexawallet.io Uh, but the best is if you could download it from any of the app stores and you know uh, send us your feedback that that's what we would love well that is awesome well thank you anand that's uh that was perfect man i guess we'll yeah we'll bring it to a close then if there's nothing else you have to share you know thanks thanks for the time it was fun sunny all right